Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Coach. Coach, I want to kick it back to the coaching staff a little bit. Having a TJ back for year two, have you seen a decent amount of growth from him coming from this fall from Gannon to now leading his own room? Yeah, TJ, we're very fortunate to have TJ. It really, you know, in all honesty, uh, TJ could easily be a, you know, non-quality control role uh, in in professional football. He's a really good football coach. He's pat- He has exactly what we – what this organization is built on is passion, energy, and swagger. And, and he has all three of those qualities. And so, uh, yeah, TJ does a great job for us. He's a very passionate coach. Um, he gives 100% every single day. Uh, and fortunately for me, I have a guy personally that is really good, a really good football coach. Okay. And really good on the computer because w- with our staff size being so small, you can't just be a computer guy or you can't just be a coach in that role and not know how to, how to operate Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel and Visio. And you have to be able to do those roles. And we're very fortunate to have somebody that's, that's coached for a long time in that role. Coach, a guy like Cole Kelly, I know he's going into camp as QB too, but with his skill set, his long body, and how much Case got banged up last year in Philadelphia, is it possible to see him kind of in a uh, – you know, in a rugby scrum role that's getting very popular in the NFL? Yeah. Well, he was QB2 today. Like I said, he, he was QB2 today. He'll be QB1 tomorrow. Um, and we're just – we're going to round, round, round robin those guys. Um, I mean, yeah, every, anything is possible. I mean, the whole stadium knew last year when the breakers were playing the showboats, when it was fourth and one, at, the whole stadium knew it was coming. It was Cole Kelly falling forward. <laughs> He's probably going to get it on, on fourth and one, third and one. Okay, with that big body type. So, yeah, anything's possible. Um, and so, uh, when we cross that bridge, we'll 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 we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, Frank talked about the quarterback situation and a little bit as well. Coach Flip talked about it uh, earlier in the week. Have we been noticing a little, little bit of extra chemistry with some of the guys who have been around in the system a little bit, and kind of essentially the merging of the showboats and the breakers kind of progressing from there as practice kind of kicks off? Yeah, well, definitely the guys that came from the breakers, like a Jonathan Adams, uh, you know, D. Anderson, Lee Morris, those are three receivers that were with us last year. So Sage Surratt, our tight end, was with us last year. So those guys, you know, have a little bit of a, a maybe a better feel than some of the other guys right now. But I will tell you the thing we've been really impressed with was how fast the other guys have caught on to this. And I think We've got a good team chemistry where guys are working really well together right now. And it's a hungry group. It's a really competitive camp, Um, you know, with the merger and being able to go out and draft from the XFL and USFL. And we did cross over and take teams from both players from both leagues. I think every team's probably upgraded, but we certainly have. So, I mean, it's uh, this is a very, very competitive camp at every position across the board. Last year, covering both leagues with the XFL, you kind of saw some names coming on the waiver wire week seven through 10 that probably were kind of holding out hope for the USFL. Just from a personnel perspective and looking, working with everyone on the staff, do you feel that just your short list isn't so short anymore, especially with the contention of the league? And also, obviously, the CFL is, you know, kind of licking their chops a little bit with all the players out there as well but is that short list something you guys are constantly evaluating which like I said probably isn't so short anymore yeah that's really a great question we we are meeting almost daily on a short list at each position and you know when you have four teams from the USFL and four teams from the XFL that are no longer competing those are a lot of good football players that are still out there so it, it was important for us to continue to build a short list list at each position, you know, as we go along and ours is still a pretty good list. I mean, it's, it's not like we don't have a lot of guys to choose from and there's a lot of guys that want to play in this league. So that's an ever evolving thing from day to day. And, uh, and we continue to look at it from day to day. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, John D flip, our head coach obviously came from the West coast background when he was a Philadelphia Eagles and, when he was at the Philadelphia Eagles, that's really the structure of the offense we're operating under right now. We're a West Coast throwing team. Um, you know, we're going to run the football. We want to be balanced. We want to have a lot of play action pass in our package also. We want to be in 11 and 12 personnel. So three wide receivers, two wide receivers, sometimes two tight ends, sometimes one. 
Um, but we want to be a very physical offensive football team. And, you know, we want to be able to stretch the field vertically. And that's where our play action pass game comes in. So, you know, if we can run the ball effectively, uh, we really feel like that enables us to throw the ball down the field effectively off the, uh, effectively off the play action passes. Uh, but we'll be a West Coast throwing team all the way. Coach, I asked Coach Flip about this uh, on Monday, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. But something when I evaluated Case's game was he's way more mobile than a lot of people probably give him credit for. And over the last two seasons, he's straight up taken a beating with some subpar offensive line play. When you have a guy like Cole Kelly, who essentially is a tight end playing the quarterback position, is it possible that we could see kind of some packages for him? Obviously, Troy is a superb athlete, but Cole, 6'7", 250 frame, that kind of makes the tush push that we're seeing in the NFL a lot more viable. Obviously, yeah. very hard to practice that, but, you know, with that, with that frame, it's kind of just fall forward buddy type situation. When you're six seven two fifty, that's a bigger tush to push, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, you Cole, got you got six thighs behind them. So. Right, right, right. No, you're right. They all three bring something to the table. You're you're exactly right about uh, uh, Case Cookus. He does move better than people give him credit for. I mean, he really he's a mobile quarterback. He can he can use his legs to make things happen. And Troy, I mean, unquestionably, is our most athletic guy, but. Um, but yeah, Cole, obviously as big as he is, and you know, he's just hard to bring down when he stands in the pocket, somebody may grab him, but I mean, we went through this last year playing against him. He can shake you off and still extend plays and get the ball down the field. So, you know, there certainly could be packages for each guy, uh, that we might use. And I know John, you know, we hadn't really got to that point yet. Cause we're still trying to evaluate these guys, but certainly they all have attributes that we'd like to use. Coach coming into this year. Last year, you had McLeod Bethel Thompson. From a leadership standpoint, how effective was he as far as with all the experience he brought and whatnot going into 2024 with Case there, who's also a seasoned pro? Do you feel like it kind of cuts away a lot of the excess fat, for lack of a better term, as far as just like, okay, this is what we need to do and whatnot? Yeah, McLeod was exceptional for us last year in, in terms of leadership and in terms of knowledge of the offense. You know, uh, Coach Flip had coached McLeod before in different camps, and so he had, you know, a, a basic knowledge of the offense and the terminology. The difference is these three guys we have now, none of the three really came from a West Coast system, so the terminology is really different for each of these guys. Uh, the leadership thing, though, has been phenomenal from all three. And again, you would expect that because they all three started last year in the USFL. So they do bring that leadership quality, which is great. It's just a matter of catching them up with the terminology. And, you know, they may have run the same play last year, but they called it something different than what we are here and maybe taught it a little bit different. So that's the, the learning curve we're dealing with with all three of them right now. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's, let's go back to 2022 a bit. and. Coming in in Philly in 2022 with Brian being the starter to 2023, it being your team, how's the mindset now for another transition? Obviously, through the NFL career in Canada, there's been a lot of moving around, but how is it kind of resetting a little bit to going from being the guy in 23 to now in 24? It's an open competition. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a few different ways you know, you could take it, you know, it's obviously, um, it's a bummer, you know, that Philly, you know, you know, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, you know, there's a lot of good guys and I had a lot of good teammates that, you know, unfortunately aren't playing. So that's like my first thought, you know, is just thinking of those guys, um, you know, we had such, such a fun team, um, and great team to be around, but, uh, you know, when, when that stuff happens, you just, you have to, you know, move on. It's, it's something kind of like you mentioned, I've bounced around so much. Um, not that I was expecting it, you know, just something that you have to deal with and you just have to move on. And um, like I said, the, the guys that um, are on the team have been great. Um, everyone's been been awesome. And um, we have such a what seems like a competitive team, like a friendly team. You know, we, we get after it when we're supposed to. And all the guys are joking around. We're having fun. So um, it's been a great experience transition, transition over when it came to teams and then. You know, personally, just 
it's just something I'm used to, you know, like, like you mentioned, I, I bounce around, I've done, you know, weeks here and there, been cut, I've bounced here, bounced there, get to Canada, USFL, wasn't the starter, was the starter, I broke my leg, you know, practice squad on the Rams, just like all that stuff, you just, you know, you kind of just have to roll with the punches and, and keep going. So um, overall, though, I think this opportunity I'm very excited about, I think, uh, Coach Flip, you know, offers an opportunity to run a West Coast system that, um, you know, is maybe more um, like the pros run. And, um, you know, I think in Philly, we spread it out a lot. And I think um, overall, it'd be cool to run this kind of system.